Competition has always been the cornerstone of success. That's why today we're talking about an up and coming BIM platform that's making waves across the entire world. Today we're comparing ArchiCAD against BricsCAD. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk about architecture and technology. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Today, we're talking about BricsCAD and ArchiCAD, and we're gonna be comparing them in detail. If you haven't heard about BricsCAD before, believe it or not, they've been around for almost two decades and are making waves around the world. Because of this whole Revit crisis and major firms stepping up, stating their displeasement with Revit and Autodesk, BricsCAD has really stepped up here and taken over some of these major firms. Personally, I'm an ArchiCAD user, so that's why I wanted to make this review and this video today. I wanna to use everything I've learned with ArchiCAD over the last five years and compare it to this up and coming BricsCAD platform. Like always with these reviews, let's start with price. ArchiCAD is a bit of a tricky one to give you a flat price on because you have to go and contact a rep to get a basic price from them. From me and my personal experience, it's been a couple years since we purchased ArchiCAD for the office, but it was approximately 5,500 Australian dollars. This is a one-time upfront payment that allows you to buy ArchiCAD, whatever version is out at the time, and it's yours forever. Now, 5,500 Australian dollars is a pretty good deal when you compare it to Revit, which is 5,500 Australian every single year. But then when you compare it to BricsCAD, they're only asking for 1,820 Australian dollars for a forever license. Yes, this is the same situation, buy the latest and greatest version, and if you wish to update, it's approximately $700 per year for both platforms. So straight away, in the get-go, ArchiCAD is gonna cost you two times as much, almost three times as much, to set up and buy versus BricsCAD. BricsCAD does have a variety of different licensing options or different methods that you can sign up to. So if you are interested in learning more about their pricing modules, you can check out their website. But today, we're just gonna be comparing those two factors there. Now, the next feature we're gonna be talking about is login capabilities. As an ArchiCAD user, I've used the ArchiCAD dongle for a very long time now, and I absolutely hate the thing. Every time I switch between my home computer, my work computer, my work laptop that I travel to and from Perth is a bit of a problem because I have a genuine tendency to forget that dongle. Every time I need to go on a work trip, it is in my calendar as a notification to remember to take it home. So it's a serious, serious pain to have to remember that USB all the time. With BricsCAD, they give you two different options. A network key that allows you to connect it to as many computers as you like, as long as you're connected to the network or a single license key option, which allows you to connect it up to two different computers at any given time. If you need a third, you simply just uninstall or remove the key from one computer to be able to activate it on another. I really wish ArchiCAD had something that was similar to this. ArchiCAD does have a cloud-based system, login system, but again, you have to be connected to a host server or you have to log into the dongle first to activate that computer. So it is a bit of a mess around still. At the moment, we're in the process of transitioning to this system, so it might be a little bit better, but my current feelings are that BricsCAD has the better and more powerful login system. So what about the minimum specifications you need to run both of these programs? Now, BricsCAD gives you some very questionable information on their website. Let me, let me read it to you. You need a minimum of one gigabyte RAM, one gigabyte of free space, and one gigabyte processor. When you compare that to ArchiCAD, they recommend an i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and anywhere from 3 to 3.6 gigahertz of processing power, which means you have to have a very, very powerful computer to be able to run ArchiCAD at its optimal performance level. The reason I say BricsCAD's specifications are a little bit questionable is because when you start pumping in a lot of data and you start modeling masses and masses and masses, your computer is gonna need a lot more power. So yes, you can definitely run BricsCAD on the bare minimums of 111, 
but personally I'd still recommend having a good powerful computer to be able to back up if you're planning on building something like a 10 story apartment building or even a 50 story skyscraper. BrickSCAD has a lot of plugins including Enscape which Enscape requires a lot more as a minimum processing power than BrickSCAD does. So if you're looking at the minimum specs of just BrickCAD, it's probably a good idea to then look at all the plugins that you're looking to use and look at their performance requirements. For example, Enscape uses a lot more than BrickCAD. Enscape requires a minimum of i5, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a two gigabyte dedicated video card. Because it doesn't run on Mac, it requires that video card for a Windows operating system. So straight away, if you're planning on using Enscape as a pair to BricsCAD, you're automatically gonna need those higher specs. Okay, so let's get into the softwares. ArchiCAD has a very clean, modern UI that gets updated and refreshed every single year a new version comes out. In my personal opinion, ArchiCAD has done a very good job at defining their UI. All their logos match, all their symbolism matches, all the text is the same, and it's got a very good graphic design element to it. BricsCAD, on the other hand, when I first opened it up and had a good play with it, personally, I didn't find the graphics and the logos and the symbols all to be uniform. It seems like they were jumping between cartoon images and logos to 2D lines to kind of AutoCAD style logos and Revit style logos. So it seemed to be a bit of a mix match between all of the different symbols and logos. But overall, it did have still a very clean, very uniform look. There was nothing off-putting about the UI. It was all minimalistic and black, which personally I prefer. So when you first open it up, you are greeted with a very nice UI. One major difference here when you open up ArchiCAD versus when you open up BricsCAD, ArchiCAD is a dedicated standalone program. It's just ArchiCAD. BricsCAD, on the other hand, has multiple different versions that you can open up. For example, it has the shape option, which is completely free. It has the mechanical, the drafting, and the BIM. So there's a number of different functionalities and features that you can go into once you start BricsCAD. If you're looking at just doing some massing, you'd go into shape. If you're looking at doing more architectural work or more engineering work, you'd go into BIM, and you'd use the program as it needed for that stage. ArchiCAD, for the other hand, is all built into one. So as you progress through the stages, you stay on the same software. Neither of this is really a pro and a con. They both have the capabilities of doing the exact same thing, just in a different manner. How you prefer to do your stages, if you're somebody who likes to go from SketchUp, do the massing and blocking and stacking, and then go into something like Revit and really detail it, then BricsCAD might actually be the perfect feature for you it has that ability to give you the blocking and stacking and then the BIM capabilities. Whereas ArchiCAD, you kind of dive straight into the BIM management and BIM software straight away. When it comes to construction documentation, it becomes imperative that all of your information is very clear and very detailed. In my opinion, when I've used ArchiCAD and when I use BricsCAD to document a project, there were two very similar but very different programs. ArchiCAD, for example, I have a lot of experience in, so I can do things quickly. I'll take that out of the equation. ArchiCAD has the ability to really fine tune everything in 3D, align everything, and it is a self-sufficient 3D BIM modeling program. When I started modeling on BricsCAD, on the other hand, it kind of reminded me a lot more of the Autodesk BIM management software. So it's kind of similar to Revit, but crossed with AutoCAD at the same time. You have the ability to type in commands, but you have the ability to draw in 3D. So I think for anybody that is coming from an Autodesk background into the BIM management world, this is definitely a viable option that you should be considering. The same way you can dimension, tag walls, add doors, animate your windows, etc. in ArchiCAD, you can do the same thing in BricsCAD. It is a very different process, and again, I'm not as familiar with it, so it took me a little bit longer to figure out how to actually do all these bits and pieces, but once I got the hang of it, it was very similar and very easy to use. I think personally speaking, again, trying to take out the fact that I know ArchiCAD a lot better, I still do personally believe that documentation is quicker on ArchiCAD than it would be on BricsCAD, but potentially if you had a lot more experience in BricsCAD, it might be a little bit quicker. You might know all the tips and tricks, 
but for me it's still something very different between documenting on ARCHICAD and documenting on BricsCAD. So what are the pros of both softwares? So let's start with the pros of both programs. First of all, ARCHICAD. ARCHICAD has been a long time favorite for students and universities. A lot of firms out there use ARCHICAD and it is a desirable thing to have on your resume. It has a very clean UI, multiple plugins, and very, very user friendly. It is incredibly stable with IFC files, which is the future of BIM management, and it is able to communicate with almost any single software out there. Overall, ARCHICAD has a very strong base and is a good consideration for your first and also your last software to learn. BricsCAD, on the other hand, is kind of what Revit was like 10 years ago. Revit has now stopped innovating. They're no longer focusing on architecture and they're solely focusing on engineering, like they've unfortunately stated. BricsCAD is again focusing on the architecture. They're putting the time and effort and energy into updating all these features year after year after year. At the moment, they're on version 20. They've implemented so many features that they've caught up and surpassed most of the basic features in ARCHICAD and Revit. They've gone ahead and even added AI automation into their documentation phases. So right now on ARCHICAD, you definitely can't go ahead and rely on ARCHICAD to do any AI. It doesn't even have that capability. BricsCAD, on the other hand, has the AI capability to really try and push forward and generate models and documentation better and quicker. So from a pro point of view, I think BricsCAD is really innovating and pushing and nipping at the heels of ARCHICAD and Revit to really make sure they grow as companies, but BricsCAD is able to surpass them. I wouldn't be surprised if in five years time, it became very normal that it was either Revit or BricsCAD or ARCHICAD and BricsCAD, and it was no longer just ARCHICAD and Revit that most people discussed and deliberated between which software they should learn. If you're ahead of the curve and want to start exploring new programs, it's definitely a good time to go and learn BricsCAD because they have a 30-day free trial. That's how I got my software. That's how I explored the software. So if you want to sign up for 30 days for completely free, no sponsorship from me, no nothing whatsoever, jump on their website, download it for free, have a good play, see if it's worth you learning and investing your hard-earned money into. What about the cons? Well, ARCHICAD has a lot of them, believe it or not. ARCHICAD requires a lot of plugins to do the job well. At the moment, we use CAD image, keynotes, and also roof coverings, and we use 4D libraries, and a whole bunch of other things to be able to produce the documentation and the quality of work that we do at the moment at my office. Unfortunately, this means that there is the base price of $5,500 plus the $700 odd yearly maintenance fee for ARCHICAD, but then you also have all the plugins that go with it. So all of a sudden, ARCHICAD has gone from $700 a year in maintenance to like $1,200 a year in maintenance. It becomes very expensive very, very quickly. One of the cons I think personally for me for BricsCAD is the fact that here in Australia at least, not many firms are using BricsCAD, so it isn't a desirable skill to have. I know that in the US, the UK, and around the rest of the world, BricsCAD is breaking through and they're already with some major firms. That means if you wanna work for one of these top firms, you're probably gonna to need to know BricsCAD. In addition to that, I think BricsCAD's UI system is very different from ARCHICAD and very similar to Revit. So if you're an ARCHICAD user moving to BricsCAD, it's gonna take you a little bit of time to learn. If you're an Autodesk user moving to BricsCAD, you're gonna pick that up so quickly it's going to be like second nature to you so that's a con only for the people transitioning from archicad to bricscad so what's my overall verdict well personally in australia i don't see that bricscad has pushed into the market so much that it demands every university student to learn if you're in the us uk or around the world then you have a lot more opportunities to find a firm that will be using bricscad on the other hand if you are an australian firm or any firm around the world looking for a new program to be able to run your system and your whole office on, I think BricsCAD is definitely a viable option, especially considering the price. The biggest downfall for most firms is having to flip $5,000, $10,000 a year on licensing for just software that their staff have to use. That's five, ten thousand 10,000 per staff member. If you had 10 staff members, that's 100,000 Australian dollars 
every year that you have to flip the bill for before you make a single dollar. Versus BricsCAD, for example, it would only cost you $20,000 for 10 staff members for the first setup year. It gets cheaper and cheaper along the way. So from a financial point of view, it definitely makes sense to pick the more viable option. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button down below. It helps this video get shown to more people and helps this channel grow. If you enjoyed it and wanna see more of my content, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And as always, I'll see you next Monday.